So you spent thousands of dollars on a forward facing sonar equipment for your boat. Yet, here you are spot locking on a brush pile and catching barely legal fish. If this is you, this video is for you. On today's video, I'm gonna be going over step by step how to get out on any lake that you're on, on any body of water that has fish in it. Find that single open water fish, put your jig to that fish and catch it. I have stared at this screen for 20 plus thousands of hours over the course of the last four or five years. I have caught giants, I have caught small ones, I have caught anything in, in between. I have taught people on their boats exactly how to do this so i mean to be honest what i'm going to share in this video you know i would normally teach you on the water but i'm going to try my best to do this now there is a disclaimer i do not have live scope on my boat right now you know i had to sell it uh, a year ago to pay some bills that you know my family needed but it is what it is that doesn't you know stop me from having all this knowledge in between my two years so um, i'm going to teach you the best way i can for a youtube video without having a gps uh garmin unit so i could record it on my phone so even if i did still have my setup it would be really hard for me to record so hopefully i can edit this video enough good enough that explains everything first and foremost the most important thing about finding roaming fish there are certain times of the year where it is better but you can do this all year long we're in the summer right now so you want to focus on a creek channel not not a river channel river channel is you're going to find so many different single fish out there but a creek channel that is a good creek now you can't roll up to any creek and expect to catch a giant some creeks have better fish than others but the first and foremost, the number one rule, fish into the wind. And what I mean by that, if you're pulling up in this creek right here, you want to position your boat to go into the wind. That's gonna give you the chance to get up on this fish. That's gonna give you the chance not to spook the fish. And that's also, you're not gonna be able to run over this fish unless you have your trolling motor set too high all that is going to come with time on the water this isn't that like you know i'm going to tell you exactly what to do and you're going to get out there and be able to do it the first time it's going to take time to learn boat control boat control is the hardest part about live scope that a lot of people that don't have live scope don't understand you know i'm going to get a lot of comments down below that live scopes this blah 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 blah, blah which I, I could really give to to donkey don't get butts about you know like the technology is here and i'm going to teach it boat control is something that's hard to teach but it starts with fishing into the wind that's going to give you an opportunity to find your fish line your boat up and go to that fish so let's first talk about how we're going to be finding these fish you're going to put your your forward range out to about 40 to 50 feet anything past that you're not really going to be able to make out now if you have a nine to seven inch screen i recommend going 40 to 30 feet out just because everything the further you get every fish looks like a straight line and you're fishing for lines and you're going to catch you know bass and all kinds of stuff without actually knowing what it is Set your range out as far as you're comfortable with, like I said, 50 to 60 feet for a 10 inch plus screen. You're gonna get into the wind. We're in this creek channel right here. We got our boat positioned into the wind. Now, if you have your transducer on a pole, that's fine. If you have a transducer on your trolling motor, that's fine. We're gonna do the same thing that I call the live scope dance. And you're gonna start trolling this creek channel. And what you're going to do is about every four to five seconds, you want to take your foot and you want to pan your transducer back and forth. And if you have it on a pole, you take your hand and you pan that transducer back and forth. Now, what that's going to allow is, you know, the transducer goes which way? This is forward 
facing sonar. So if you just point your transducer forward, you're only going to see what's in front of you in that 20 degree cone. So when you pan around, you're able to see other things. And you just keep trolling, keep trolling, keep trolling. This, I mean, it can take 30 minutes to 45 minutes to find a fish big enough that you want to catch. You know, there's a disclaimer on that. Do not throw at every fish you see. If that fish is not as big as your jig, why are you even attempting to catch it? You know, this is a very blunt video because this technique is very, very difficult to master. Like I have days where, you know, even I can't get on a fish without scaring it. So you're in the wind, you're panning around and you see a suitable target, a blob, kind of like this blob on the screen right now. You know, a bass is going to move a lot more than a crappie. A perch is going to move a lot more than a crappie. You're looking for a football like blob. Bass is going to look kind of like a football like blob, but I call bass swimmers. If that fish is swimming a lot, it's darting, nine out of 10, not a crappie. Now, if that fish is in one part of the water column, not moving a lot, you're able to position your boat and get up to that fish, probably a crappie. Now, after you catch a few, it's gonna click in your brain, be like, okay, that's crappy, that's a bass, that's, I mean, you gotta put it in the top. But, okay, we're panning around in this creek channel. We find a suitable target. What is the first thing we want to do? We go catch the fish. No, we do not go catch the fish. The first thing you do, and it's, it's got to be engraved into your head. When you find a suitable target, say you're going up this creek channel to the wind, your suitable target's over here to the right. The first thing you've got to do is kick that trolling motor back, position yourself so you're in the wind and that fish is in the wind also. So the first key is stay on the fish. If you lose the fish, you'll never catch it. It's not about finding your jig. It's not about anything else at that time. You've got to stay on that blob no matter what. You know, spin your trolling motor around, troll, 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 spin it around, find the blob. Get your boat into that wind, find the blob. Stay on the blob. Know where that blob is at all times. Now, once you've got your boat positioned into the wind and that blob is directly in front of you at 30 to 40 feet, the next thing you need to do is take a 10 foot plus, I don't care how hard, how long, or you can cast a fish. Now for a beginner, I do recommend the long pole. Take a 10 foot plus pole. You want a uh, bobber stop, sinker, bobber stop, down to your jig. You know, leave about this much room. That way it's easy to find on the screen. Take your pole and drop it directly at your transducer so you can find your jig. Now, at, at all times during this, you've got to know where that blob is. See what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot to keep up with in your head. And you're probably like, man, I don't even wanna do this anymore. It, it becomes second nature. Stay on the blob, drop your pole right beside the transducer so your jig is on your screen. So then you wanna look at the brightness. You wanna find the brightest form of that fish. If you go to the left a little bit and that fish gets a little bit brighter, that's the way you wanna go. If you go to the right a little bit and it gets brighter, that's the way you wanna go. Now, if you start losing the, the cone on the fish, you're going the wrong way. And once you find that, you take your pole and you shift until your jig is as bright as it can get and that fish is as bright as it can get. That is 100% the best angle to put that jig in that fish's mouth. Now, turn your trolling motor on low, as low as you can to get to that fish in the wind. Five to 10 mile hour, 15 mile hour, 20 mile an hour wind. You know, as slow as you can to get to that fish. Keep your jig as bright as possible keep that fish as bright as possible. And what you want to do, if that fish is at 10 feet down, put your jig at seven feet, eight feet. 
and then troll to that fish. Put your jig on that fish as slow as possible. And you steadily troll, troll, troll. And right when that fish is in between 15 to 10 feet, kick off the trolling motor and let your boat glide up to him. And you know, reach out with your pole if you have to, but you want that jig right above that fish. And you want it to be bright, the fish to be bright. If the fish moves to the left and he's brighter over here, take your pole and move with that fish. And eventually that fish is gonna, his tail is gonna move one good time and that's when he bites. That's the, the best explanation I can do without actually being on the water showing you of how to live scope your first fish. You know, that's a lot of details. You may want to rewatch the video, but that's exactly how you do it. Now there's, you know, tips and tricks throughout that entire process that you're going to learn. But this is a process that you spent thousands of dollars on. Why not go out there and learn it? You know, it's fun pulling up to a brush pile or a dock. Okay, the fish are over there. Let me catch some real quick. But when I tell you you hook an absolute two and a half to three pound fish and it was, you know, just out there in the middle of the lake, there's no better feeling. So if I taught you something, hit that thumbs up button for me, subscribe down below, and I hope I'll catch you on the next video.